Let me just address, I'm not sorry at all for wearing my pajamas in today's video. Hello, Bidgets. My name is Fredicini Alfredo because that is the name of my Twitter. And that is a perfect segue to today's video because I wanted to paint. But I also wanted to talk to you guys because I feel like this year I want to be more honest. And College Frederick currently gives no fucks and he will probably regret this in four years. So I asked you guys on Twitter. <coughs> No, I'm not sick. I'm just telling you to follow me on Twitter. Hey, that was honest. We're off to a great start. I asked you guys on Twitter to send me any question as long as it'll stay monetized. And I said I would answer them honestly with no filter because I don't give a shit. I'm also working on this big ass painting. And this is like my third day working on it because I'm a slow painter. And this is a pain in my ass. So this is a paint with me video and a Q&A. So I guess you can call this a Q and paint. That was terrible. If you are very smart and a hardcore gamer, you'll know what I'm painting, but I'm not gonna focus on the painting. This is about the question, so let's start answering some. And let me get my paint out. What is the number one thing you won't do as a YouTuber? Hey, so I realized that making this video, I couldn't say everything I wanted to say, so I pinned a something in the comment section that has all my opinions if you want to take the time to read that. Okay, bye. I'll never become part of the beauty community. One, I'm already beautiful, so I don't need the community to tell me. And two, I don't like them. I don't like any of them anymore. And I know everyone always asks for another YouTuber's opinion on other YouTubers, even though it doesn't matter. And I'm not gonna expose anyone's name because I don't care to name them. But I just have a really big problem with YouTubers who manipulate their audience in a bad way. Every YouTuber is manipulative, and th that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know the word always has a negative connotation to it, but if you think about it, manipulating can just be getting you to do something that we want. YouTubers do it every day by making a good looking thumbnail, a good title, saying merch is limited edition so you get to buy it faster, even though it comes back every other month. You know, that stuff is like, Okay, no one cares because it's our job to do that. It's my job to entertain you guys. Yeah, I have to make a good title and video. It's not gonna be watch me piss on a toilet for two hours straight. Well, some people would want to watch that. Don't get any ideas. And let me have my opinion. You can get offended, I don't care, but just respect my opinion. I think most of you are sane to understand where I'm coming from. There are some people in the beauty community who are so far up their own ass and on the social hierarchy list that they just think that they're untouchable. No one can have a bad opinion on them without getting hate. Which to me is very ironic because those are the same people who say in the comments like Everyone gets so offended. And then they too get offended at another person's opinion. Hypocrisy is everywhere basically. But I don't know, those big YouTubers, it's just... I don't like the fact that they force themselves to be relatable. I understand the appeal of being relatable. I mean, everyone likes to be relatable. To an extent, every YouTuber has to be relatable in order to get the following they want. But you can be relatable based on your personality and your hobbies. But when you force it by saying things that are complete lies, I just wonder, like, how stupid do you think your audience is? A good majority of people on YouTube are naive because they're very young. A lot of us are very young. I was just as naive when I was little watching other YouTubers too, and then I stopped following following them because I realized they were dicks. I just don't see how beauty influencers, influencers are relatable anymore. Like is a beauty guru really relatable if they complain about being poor and they're a millionaire? How many people watching them are also in that same situation? How many get millions of makeup products every day? That's not the average person. And I'm not saying you can't be relatable once you're a big YouTuber. Just watch Jenna Marbles for God's sakes. It's her personality and what she does that makes her relatable. It's her genuineness, not the act that they put on YouTube. Because a lot of YouTubers have to put on an act. We're all personalities. We have elevated versions or we can make our own versions of ourselves that we want to show to the audience. That's just my two cents on it. I mean, I'm very opinionated on that stuff. It's one of the few things I don't like about YouTubers, but I know at the end of the day, most people don't care and they're not gonna be canceled anyways because they are untouchable. Let's just go on to the next question. Hobby you wanna pursue? I have told you guys I wanted to go into animation and I'm still working on that. I don't think I'll become an animation channel, but I do want to do it because it's always been like, that hobby I can never pursue, you know? What do you want to accomplish this decade? That is asking a lot because at the end of this decade, I'll be almost 30. And I still don't consider myself adult yet, but get my own apartment, have a boyfriend. I don't have to be married. I just want to be able to have someone before I turn 30 or else I will 
freak out. I've been working on this one place for so long, I'm sorry. I'm trying to paint grass, okay? I pray I have a good job by the time I'm 30. I wanna graduate college and I just wanna be happy. I mean, that's my main goal. I don't like the idea of setting all these expectations because I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go through all of them, let's face it. And I'll just be disappointed at the end. So if I have low expectations, I don't have to get disappointed by anything. I also want a steady hand in the next 10 years. What made you wanna do YouTube? To anyone who's watched my live streams in the past, I've talked about this and that's kind of why I'm doing this video because I don't really do live streams anymore. But I originally started YouTube because I had to move from South Carolina to New Jersey and I didn't want to move because I had a great friend group and I didn't want to lose that. And I knew YouTubers could make money. So I was like, what if I can get famous in six months and be able to pay for the house and my parents so we don't have to move anywhere? That obviously didn't work out. But it made me realize I love doing YouTube videos so I kept going with it. And now I wanna say my purpose for doing YouTube is to be a role model I never had growing up because there was never a Gaijin on the, on the internet and you guys tell me that I inspire you to come out and that's just that makes me happy at the end of the day That lets me know I did my job. What was your biggest high school memory that you'll cherish for a long time? Well, that was only a year ago I don't really have many good high school memories if I think about it I love college so much more, but my favorite one I want to say being able to talk to my assistant principal about anything every experience with him and my other teachers were they'd help me to this day. It wasn't some pep rally or high school party that I'm gonna love forever because I wasn't invited to those anyways. How does it feel to actually grow up and realize you're not a kid anymore? Well, I hate you for telling me I'm not a kid. <laughs> How dare you? I think what I realized I was an adult when someone told me they only knew Teen Titans Go and not the original and I was like, God damn, Gen Z is fucked. And I know I'm part of it but I'm your elder. I am an OG Gen Z, and you will watch Teen Titans and not the new one on Cartoon Network because Jesus Christ, that's a terrible show. But I like growing up. I like being able to be independent and have my own life in New York, but I love being at home too. Like, I still like being a kid. What is something people in your fan base do that you wish they didn't? Well, I don't want to generalize my own fan base because I love the majority of you guys, but always there's that 1% that no one likes. People who always compare me to other K-pop people or just compare me in general, it diminishes finishes my idea of myself. Cause I start to think, are you watching me because I'm me? Or are you watching me because I'm someone else? And I think that's the biggest thing is I don't want people who watch me for one thing. I don't want to be known as the piano guy, the guy who painted his shoes. I don't want to be known for a specific thing. I would rather be known for who I am as a person. Oh, and stop asking me about K-pop cause you guys know my opinion. What's something new you learned and never want to forget? The piano. How is school going for you and how is dorm life? College is really fun. Uh, I love my classes and I love my major. My dorm life could be better. I don't have the best roommates, but they are tolerable. I'll probably make a video about my rooming situation in the future once I'm not a freshman. What's the perfect guy like to you? Someone who isn't surface level. If you think you're hot and that's all you use to get followers, good for you, but you won't get my follow. I just want someone who has a lot of you know, things to them. Someone interesting, but I'm also not looking for anyone at the moment because I want to focus on YouTube still. And I think I've always said the perfect guy is someone who's passionate. Just something. I want people who are motivated because they help me stay motivated. Like, I'm allowed to sulk in bed and watch friends all day, but you have to get me out of bed. What YouTubers am I subscribed to? Over 500 channels, I think. But if there's anyone that you should watch is Jenna Marbles, because she is still the best one, in my opinion. Who's my favorite artist? If you can't tell, this is pixel art, and it's goddamn annoying because I had to draw all these squares. My favorite artist is you know, I forgot the name, but lately it's this guy on Instagram. I'll just put, post it right here. By the way, I have an art account now called That Digital Asian because some bitch took that drawing Asian and I'm gonna find them. What song would you have your cremated remains pressed into a vinyl of? Personally, I want to turn into a tree. I want to be infused into a tree seed and my children can hug me once I grow up. But if I had to choose one song, it would be Lookalike by Conan Gray. And that might be what you meant by artist. He's also my favorite artist at the moment. If if I had the power to change one thing about the world, what would it be? I wish people could stop being selfish. That is one of the biggest downfalls for humans in general. And everyone, including your favorite YouTubers, believe it or not, we are all guilty of being selfish. And that doesn't have to be a bad thing. It's okay to be selfish, but 
when you have millions of dollars, I would expect you to use it and not let it grow in a bank forever. No, no one cares about your trust fund, Sarah. Help out the other side of the world because your child isn't even born yet. That's not targeted towards anyone, I'm just rambling. What has been the biggest obstacle you've had to face in your YouTube and college career? For YouTube, it is myself. I had a really bad imposter syndrome and I kind of got it back towards the end of the year, but it always held me back doing YouTube because I would always doubt myself. And it's the reason why I'm still insecure about whether or not I can make this my job. Because Fun fact, not every YouTuber is a millionaire. I still have college debt. But yeah, there'll definitely be something I have to get over eventually because having that doubt, making every video is not healthy. And don't worry, I'm working on it. For college, I'd say it is finding people who like me for me. I had a dating app at some point and one of the first people who I matched with actually recognized me from YouTube and it just, it ruins it like so fast because you know something about me and I know nothing about you and I can't have a conversation cause it'll be like, hey, what's your favorite color? Oh, mine's blue. Oh, I know yours is yellow too. Is there even a point of me being here? I just know that a lot of people will be friends with YouTubers for the sake of the status, which Stop that. Grow up already. You care about my following more than I care at this point. I just want to find genuine friends, and I did find them already. But I was definitely paranoid going into college thinking that I would not be friends with anyone. Am I happy? Yeah, I'm pretty happy right now. How do you prevent yourself from catching feelings when you aren't ready to love again? This is a tip I learned from friends. Focus on the person you like. Really picture them in your mind. And then just think about something that you hate about them. And just constantly focus on that part until you eventually don't like them. But I don't think you should focus too hard on preventing because you kind of, I don't think you can stop how your heart feels. Just let yourself feel that way. That's part of life. Advice on making new friends in social life. This is not directed towards you. It's directed towards specifically people on Twitter. <laughs> Instead of spending hours online complaining about not having friends, DM some people. God damn it. <laughs> Do you realize how many communities are on Twitter and how many people are just like you searching the web for online friends? I've done that to several people and I've gotten read from a double text. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to be embarrassed for the rest of your life. It's it's how adults have to become friends. You just have to act on it. Now, if you have social anxiety, that's a different story, but it's still getting in the right mindset. But complaining for hours on Twitter will not help you get a friend. When did the saying looks can be deceiving really hit home? Sorry, but the beauty community really targeting them today. They may look pretty on Instagram, but they are ugly on the inside. Your thoughts on YouTube and how animators are on the platform. I'm not gonna focus on YouTube because I can talk about it forever. My final essay was like a YouTube burn book. So let's just talk about animators. I like them. And I'm talking story time animators specifically, not the meme animations. I don't even know why they're called memes still. I've seen the memes before and I like some of them, but why are most of them edgy? Like, it, I don't like that. I don't want to see blood and gore on every single video. I want to see happy, cute things. Oh, and one thing that bugs me is when the whole animation is just the head bobbing. Who's the rudest YouTuber I've ever met? Well, good thing is I've never met any YouTubers in real life. How do you get over someone? You can try your best, but sometimes you don't. All it takes is time. My friends have said it before and I didn't believe them, but now I do. Time is the biggest factor. And be patient, because it took me two years to get over someone. What are my major complaints about YouTube and being a YouTuber yourself? My major complaint about YouTube is how unstable it is as a job. For me, at least because it's not reliable. As much as I like being a YouTuber because it is a lot of freedom for me, it's not a stable job. There's a lot of risks to doing it. Whereas if you work, you know, a regular traditional job, like I was a cashier, that was consistent. On YouTube, it's like playing the Wheel of Fortune every day. Which YouTuber would you like to collaborate with and what would you like to do in the collab? As of right now, I will only collab with Jordan Cunningham just because I'm his friend. He is the only person on YouTube that I have talked to. I don't want to collab with someone for the sake of gaining their fan base or, you know, getting more subscribers. That's why I only show my friends on this channel and not other YouTubers. But I don't like it when YouTubers collab with each other and they're basically strangers. It's kind of obvious that it's fake and I'd rather have a genuine friend than have a good video with a famous YouTuber. Have I ever thought about quitting YouTube at some point? Yeah, a lot, <laughs> a lot. I always think about it, but I can never leave you guys. Like you made me and we have this great community. I don't want to just ditch that. I love making videos, so I don't plan on leaving. How does one obtain confidence? One obtains confidence through themselves. Is it hard? Yeah. Is it possible for everyone? Yes. I think it's the less fucks I gave about life, the more confident I became with myself. I would stop caring about captions on Instagram. They will talk about editing a photo for 
hours. And I, I, I can't do that. It's not worth my time. And like, there's two types of confidence. Like, are you confident with your body or are you confident just as a person. And I used to be insecure with my body a lot. That's right, YouTubers have feelings too. And I know Instagram is a big reason for that. Don't compare yourself to models on Instagram. Cause first of all, it's probably facetuned. And second of all, the standard for beauty is not healthy. An average person is not gonna have a 23 inch waist. You know, it's like I'm following you, what, to feel bad about myself? Hardest part about college that isn't usually talked about. I'm not gonna say this because I haven't been through all four years of college yet. So I'll just talk about this in terms of high school. Popularity in high school is one of the stupidest things to exist. And I'm gonna tell you right now, don't care about being popular in high school because there's no point in it. I went to college with the intent of getting a fresh start. But some people I know from high school carried their high school experience into their first year of college and were just still a senior in high school, if that makes sense. They didn't mature in any way. If anything, they just acted the same toxic self. And if you refuse to let yourself grow, well, have fun in the real world where no one cares what SAT you got, how good you are at lacrosse, and how attractive your boyfriend is. What are some of the biggest mistakes that I've learned from? One of the things I've always done as a kid is bottle my feelings. <sighs> My friends can tell me an indefinite amount of times to stop, and I probably won't. Another mistake I made was dating guys. Another mistake I made was buying a 24 by 24 inch canvas thinking I could do it in one day. Fuck this painting. <laughs> How do you let go of a toxic friend who only hurts you and makes you feel like the worst person ever? I'm trying to think about this like a few years back when I would still make excuses for people. Just reread what you just said. Is that worth it for a friend? A friend? You will find a better friend than that. And I think I just told myself, Frederick, stop being a goddamn pushover. You're weak. <laughs> stop being weak. And now if I find a toxic friend and I don't like him, it's just I got blocked by someone the other day, and I was so happy to be blocked by them. I don't tolerate bullshit. All right, so sorry my painting looks terrible. It'll look better once it's done. I'm just taking my goddamn time with it. But those are most of the questions you gave me. I didn't answer all of them because some were repeats, some were just not intriguing questions to me. Hopefully this helps some of you, and if you're still watching me, thank you for having a good attention span. But until then, if you enjoy this video, give it a like, leave a comment down below about what you will want me to do next. I want your opinion on all the things I said too. I like criticism. I like to hear other people's sides. So go ahead and leave those and subscribe for more videos every week. All right, let's read a coming out story. If you're new here, I read coming out stories at the end of every video just to inspire you to come out and be yourself. And they're always anonymous. So here we go. I was on a day out for my friend's birthday and we got to the person's house and I got a text saying, Hi, I don't know how to tell you this, but someone has been saying some really effed up shit. Then they proceeded to send me screenshots of saying that I'm the gayest man ever. So I was like, hashtag panic attack, and my friends who I was all out to were supporting me. I called my sister and then came out to her after seven months of knowing that I am bi. She took it really well. The next day, my sister talked to me and told me that if I wanted to sort out this mess and I would need it to come out to them. So with a lot of courage, I went downstairs and came out. The mess was sorted out and I am now out and happy as ever. Don't let people bully you. Thank you for sharing your story. And as always, I love you guys and everything is less than three.